Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. Hope you guys are feeling well this morning, getting up and getting after it. And I've had a great week so far as we're about to enter our weekend. We got a few things to talk about for your weather, specifically for today. There is the chance for severe thunderstorms across the southeast. Actually, you know, areas around St. Louis and surrounding regions are experiencing some pretty nasty weather this morning. This will a actually connect to what happens potentially in the southeast a little bit later this afternoon as what we call a mesoscale convective system will actually push downstream into the southeast and the remnants of its energy if you will will actually ignite more storms or fully stay connected all the way through the states that it passes through like Kentucky, portions of Tennessee, Virginia, places like that. But we're going to discuss that than everybody else also. So if you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about, please, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. Um, my social media platforms are over there, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Hit me up on those, especially Facebook. Got a big goal to hit 10,000 likes by the end of 2022 and you know if you just want to reach out to me you got something you want to ask or something you just need to talk about you know definitely hit me up there and I'm there I might not be able to answer within seconds I work a full-time job have a family life and things like that so I don't always get notifications very quickly but definitely hit me up there I'm always there for you guys to reach out so let's get rolling this morning the water vapor loop kind of tells exactly what's going on here the ridging in general has shifted back west so you have a ridge of high pressure that's kind of building and kind of bending into this region right here and along it you have had an explosive area of energy a lot of storms and you can see it right here in the middle of the country this will actually make its way all the way across the rest of Illinois Kentucky Tennessee all the way into the southeast heck all the way off the coast of the southeast coast by this evening and it will spark it there will be additional convection and showers and storms that fire up even that's not associated with this also and then you got an upper trough that's beginning to swing through here this will fire up some storms across new england a little bit later this afternoon too and we'll talk about this towards the end of the video and then we'll talk about it more this evening this upper trough is going to bring big time relief for at least 48 hours for a lot of folks and along the eastern U.S. It's going to bring a lot of low humidity. Dew points are going to drop all the way into the 50s and 40s, even lower in certain areas. And then certain areas might be downright even chilly, especially if you're in the higher elevations. It's going to be a welcome sight for sure as we're entering pretty much. We're getting a lot deeper in the summer, guys. I mean, it's not like we're in May anymore, but let's dive into this so there is a slight risk for this pretty large area of the southeast i'm not expecting this to get upgraded to an enhanced risk or anything like this but there is going to be some some nasty storms today you know you look at yesterday here locally in columbia and i know i got a lot of folks who watch from south carolina because this is you know where i originated with uh talking weather um you know on youtube and things like that but i tell you what we had some nasty storms here locally in the midlands of south carolina probably one of the biggest storms of the summer so far of the year um but we're expecting some nasty storms today but just like yesterday it's going to be very hard to predict where these pop up anywhere in this yellow area some certain areas might not see a drop of rain um and you know the nam was the big time winning model yesterday, the HRRR model failed, the NAM won. I mean, it was almost there to a Q. You can't expect these models to be uh, perfectionists or anything like that, but I tell you what, it, it was on its A game. Tornado threat due to this upper trough, strong trough pivoting through the northeast. So you're going to have a tornado threat for Mass, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. The entire state of Maine is under a 2% chance to see a tornado in 25 miles in any given location. So heads up for you folks up there. We'll talk a little bit on that. The wind threat is the biggest down here where you're going to have some potential for some wet downburst. Things like this with these pop-up storms that like to explode out of nowhere right on top of you. Uh, potentially produce wind damage, drop a lot of rain very quickly. Um, that is going to be a threat today. Hail will also be a threat too. There's only a 5% risk in every threat area that you see on the map, but any of these storms can produce hail for sure. So let's look at the HRRR model and look at a much more broader look at what's going on. And first off, we'll start off by looking at this. This is our energy right here. We'll try to zoom out a little bit more 
And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you see the Carolinas, Georgia, Virginia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee. Anyways, these storms have just worked their way through St. Louis right here, and they're going to plague areas of southern Illinois throughout the morning hours into Kentucky. I know it doesn't look like it's moving fast on the map you're looking at right here, but these are this is only in like a 25-30 minute interval, so it's not like this is like a one to two hour loop that you're looking at here. So there's not move, much movement in that little bit of time in general. But these storms are moving on through, and they're going to move through Kentucky, and then they're going to move kind of in this way generally. But you know, there's going to be some areas that probably branch off that way, and then maybe some areas that branch off this way. But in general. These storms that you see way up here in Illinois are going to have a chance to make its way down here. But you're going to have additional convection that fires up all in this region, um, in the south slight region today. But this will be the main driving driver of energy. It's what we call a mesoscale convective system. And this is kind of what developed yesterday across the Carolinas. So in general, we'll watch this. The HRRR model is doing an okay job initializing this. We'll take a look at this, and then we'll take a look at the NAM. And you say you see the same piece of energy flying through Kentucky later today throughout the afternoon hours, early afternoon. By the time you get to mid to late afternoon, it gets into Virginia and then areas of the Piedmont of North Carolina. But you see additional convection showers and storms popping up all throughout South Carolina. Not widespread, but it becomes a little bit more widespread as you get into the evening hours. So... We watch this and we just watch for strong and severe storms to pop up anywhere in the Carolinas, um, Georgia, into Virginia today. Kind of the same kind of deal as yesterday, but the setup is definitely different. So we have to watch this. It's not totally different, but it's a little bit different as the ridge of high pressures in general shift a little bit further west. There, therefore, therefore, the directional flow is somewhat different, but not, not much different, I'll tell you that. But uh, in general... And these storms will have a chance to pivot all the way through the Carolinas. So anybody in the Carolinas, anybody in the slight risk that you see right here has a chance to see severe storms, even in the marginal risk. You see how it has this area in the marginal risk? That is saying that even though these storms will can probably continue to maybe lose their punch a little bit in the morning hours, they will refire back up into around midday, the early afternoon hours into Kentucky, places like that. But we look at the NAM. The NAM is always going to be a little bit more aggressive, but there's always... A chance in this kind of setup, which I've learned a lot over the last week, the NAM has done better. It really has, but the NAM really goes all out. We're getting into about mid to late morning, really branches a piece of this off into uh, northern areas of Arkansas. I'm not sure if that's going to actually unfold, but we'll have to watch. But you see all this convection flying through Tennessee throughout the late morning, early afternoon hours. Even has a line of storms moving into northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. We'll watch that. That is a scenario. I know this is hard to see. We're going to get a closer look here in a second. Look at the NAM. But uh, it has basically little segments of uh, lines of storms moving through Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, northern Georgia. And then they fly through central areas of the Carolinas, northern Georgia and central Georgia, and areas of southeast Virginia as we get into the evening hours. When you're going out and about doing your Friday night activities, there could be some strong storms. That's why it's always good to have a reliable radar downloaded on your phone i'm telling you the weather channel app uh just does not cut it guys it's very um i know it's free i know it is i know i get it free is good and sometimes free is enough but uh, you really want a reliable radar definitely uh, download something like radar scope which is only a whopping ten dollars a year um but i know i understand i'm, I'm very I'm, I'm a very cheap person trust me i do not like spending money on things that i don't necessarily have or need have to have but anyways storms will fly through the carolinas but i tell you what the nam has this thing continuing to flow here shifts from a, a southeast direction just due south heads all the way to jacksonville then it shifts and starts moving uh southwest and flies to the panhandle of florida um, throughout the overnight hours into the morning hours of tomorrow. So it's very interesting to see if the NAM is going to verify here. But here's the NAM right here, which I'm going to favor because it's done so good this week. Um, energy coming into areas of the Carolinas a day. More energy fires up, but same kind of energy associated with what's flying through southern Illinois right now. Big time storm. Let's back this up since I'm getting a little too early in movement right here. Big time storm showing up in, for example, around Raleigh. Um, uh, this afternoon, uh, you know, you got storms firing up in the upstate central South Carolina. Big storms are going through the Delmarva area, Richmond. Watch out. 
uh, Southeast Virginia for sure. Uh, Columbia down there to Orangeburg. So it's going to be impossible to figure out where these are going to form. Are they going to be more congealed into a line of storms like yesterday? Very hard to figure out, but, but we'll, we'll know soon enough as we get into the afternoon hours. So uh, just be careful down in Southeast uh, today. You know, you never know. I mean, like last night, that was a wild storm. Produced three to four inches of rain in certain areas of the Midlands yesterday. And uh, you never know if you're going to have a storm like that right on top of you. Up here in the northeast, you got a different setup with the upper trough uh, really driving this. Big time forcing will initiate some storms along this trough that's going to pivot through and bring much more comfortable air for the northeast. But you're going to have to deal with the storms first. So you're going to have a line of storms rocking through Maine probably around midday to early afternoon. This will go all the way to the down east areas. It will flow through New, new Hampshire, Vermont to get into Mass. And, uh, you know, areas like Boston, you guys could get some gnarly storms a little bit later this afternoon. You are under a marginal risk, which is a level one out of five. I know you're thinking that's not a big deal, but, you know, I've seen some pretty nasty storms and marginal risk um, for sure as uh, I've been watching weather throughout my time here. But uh, these are probably going to rot through southern New England and then maybe another area of showers and storms initiates here for Maine. But I think they will weaken as they flow through southeast Canada and make it across the U.S. border into Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and the interior northeast as they lose daytime heating. But I tell you what, these storms right into this area today, damaging winds is a threat, but there's also a tornado threat with this as the kinematics are elevated due to this upper trough. Uh, it's definitely a different driving force up here in the northeast as opposed to maybe the southeast where you're just, you know, you're, you're just getting a flow, a jet flow basically around a ridging of high pressure. So be careful up here. Um, you know, have a way to get alerts up here in the northeast because you never know. You, there might be a couple tornado warnings up here in the northeast today. South central U.S., quiet. Continues to be quiet. You know, the heat's not quite as bad, not quite as intense, but it's probably going to start to build again as we get into next week. Um, some showers and storms certainly possible, you know, in and around the Dallas Fort Worth, or Fort Worth area. Certainly points east and southeast. Um, and maybe a storm or two in southeast Missouri, northwest Arkansas for sure is definitely possible. Both the NAM and the HRR model shows it. So, uh, you know, maybe a severe storm later this afternoon and evening. The north central US, U.S., besides what's flowing through here in Illinois and Missouri right now, pretty, pretty quiet, very quiet. Probably the most quiet day in some time up here where you don't really see any convection except maybe some showers uh, entering uh, South Dakota, but very quiet up here. Nothing going on today, just a chill day, and we're thankful for that. But I tell you what, the heat is going to flex. It's probably going to be a little hotter today than maybe it was yesterday for certain areas of Southeast ahead of this convection that's going to flare up. It's wild. You know, yesterday I, my weather station hit 101.7 degrees here in Columbia ahead of the storms. Very hot day. Um, I'm not sure what uh, Columbia ended up getting to. I know I always reference Columbia, but that's where I live. Um, and I honestly think it's one of the hottest places on, uh, east of the Mississippi. But anyways, very hot day. There's going to be a tight boundary up here. Not a tight boundary, but you know, a boundary where very hot temperatures are going to sit in more warm to pleasant temperatures up here in the northeast. But you see this plume of cooler air in the southeast. That is that upper trough. Areas in uh, southern and southeast Canada, only 40s for highs. It's a strong upper trough pivoting through. And uh, I tell you what, it's going to be hotter than Hades across the south again with high humidity, especially the further southeast you go. But um, the relief is coming. Thank, thank the Lord for that. But heat advisories are up again, especially for the coastal regions of Carolinas where the humidity will really flex ahead of the system. But heat advisories up for almost the entire state of Alabama, most of the state of Georgia, areas of the entire Big Bend and Panhandle of Florida, the entire state of Mississippi, large sections of Arkansas, Missouri, and Kansas. But this is excessive heat watches, and this is due to the fact that the ridge is shifting back west before it shifts back east later next week. So big time heat is coming again for the plains for sure. But I'll tell you what, I'll show you something good, some good news, and we'll talk about this more tonight. These are dew points. So this is for around late this afternoon, early this evening today. Look at these dew points racing in into, and in fact, you know, you're going to wake up pretty humid across New England, for example, even the Northeast in general. But sometime later this morning into the early afternoon hours, uh, basically, you're going to have a change in air mass. You're going to feel it. Within one to two hours, you'll 
you might take take a break, walk outside, and then you'll come back outside, and then all of a sudden the air mass is totally different. It's less humid. This is going to happen, and it's going to get reinforced uh, a little bit later overnight. But you see these dew points, lower dew points, you know, high humidity in the southeast, dew points in the 60s and 70s down here. Look at the relief coming. These dew points, I mean, this is going to be a stout cutoff, too. I mean, I really think in the southeast it'll probably happen tomorrow probably around morning to early afternoon and you're going to wake up it's going to be humid like it has been and then by the time you get to the afternoon hours evening hours you're grilling out in the southeast it's just you're going to think to yourself wow where did the humidity go so we'll talk more about this tonight but this is going to be a relief it's not going to stick around um it's kind of uncommon for this time of the year but it certainly happens but that's all i got guys thank y'all for tuning in god bless all y'all i'll be with y'all this evening and y'all have a great friday